everyone, it's Samara and today I'd like to show you some of my brand new favorite supplies. And so um, let me just go ahead and walk you through them. Um, these are the Derwent watercolor um, pencils, not crayons. And I picked these up at my Michaels for 49 cents a piece. Uh, they were on clearance and I have this feeling that Derwent is coming out with a new, um, maybe a new shape or color. I mean, I don't know, don't quote me on that, but 49 cents, I certainly couldn't pass it up. So I picked these up. I really, really like them. I have fallen in love with the Derwent brand. It's definitely quality stuff. Um, I also was able to pick up a couple of the Aquatone. And the Aquatone is really neat because it's the same um, pencil. It's the same inside, but there's no wood. It's a woodless pencil. And then as you use it, you just simply strip away this... Um, this piece so you get full use of the pencil there's no wood no need to sharpen I mean you can sharpen if you like but you certainly don't have to so I picked up um, a very large assortment here let me just reach across and show you I picked up a very large assortment of those um, I ha pretty much have a full color range here so um after playing with those um, I you know, I keep looking at different products at my Michael store. It's the only art store that we have here in town. And um, I saw these, the um, Derwent Ink Tents pencils. And what's really cool about these is that it's actually, well, they're different than um, the standard color pencil. First of all, they look a little bit different. These have a round barrel. They're slightly larger than um, the traditional watercolor pencil. Um, but these are actually water-soluble ink. So what that means is you put them down dry, you go over it with your, um, with your brush, your, with water, and after you have activated the pencil, it can no longer be activated, it can no longer blend. So in a sense, it's almost like it's permanent. I don't know if that's the right word, but hopefully you'll get my drift. Um, they come in a full line of colors. I only have the 24 set, and I'm already itching for that um, for the rest of the colors. Uh, they're pretty amazing, and I'll show you some backgrounds that I did and some um, drawings that I did with these pencils. So then, I couldn't stop here. Seriously. So then, the next addition to um, to my house was these. These are the uh, Derwent. Graf let's see, Graphitent, and I don't have a cover in my box, somehow um, it got lost, um, but these come in, I don't know, I think, I'm not quite sure how many colors they come in, but um, I have the 12 pack because, again, that's all my Michaels had, and um, these are actually a graphite, like a tinted graphite, and they come out very, very soft and just... They're absolutely delicious, and I'll show you some of the pages I've done with those. And then my newest addition is the Derwent Metallic. And these apparently look amazing on black, um, black paper. Um, this is the full line. It only comes in 12 colors, and um, they are, they're delicious too. So why don't I quit showing you what these what they look like and let's show how they work. So here is my um, my journal and I've kind of marked a couple pages um, that I want to show you. So this one, this page here, I did with my, um, excuse me, my watercolor pencil. Okay. And so all I did was color out the page and then I used my watercolor pencil and blended it in. Excuse me. And then this page here, I love this page. My son um, asked me to paint some poppies and, and so I did. Um, 
this page was done with the ink tents. And so you can see how vibrant the colors are. They're so, so, so vibrant. It's just, it's truly incredible once you get um, working with them. And what I like is that you can paint in pieces, like in sections, and then you don't have to worry about, after you let it dry, you don't have to worry about smearing that part again. So it's really, really super. Um, this page was also done with the ink tents. Can you tell I'm in love? And this page was done with the ink tents. Here I was kind of fooling around, and then I just kind of um, went ahead and finished it. And I uh, just, I love them. This is probably my favorite. This was done with the Graphitent, um, with these, the Graphitent. Oh, this is the one that I don't have the cover for. Um, it's so soft. I, it's like I, I seriously just like want to crawl crawl into this page because it's like it's like a soft blanket. Oh, I can't get enough of it. This page was also um, done with the graphitant, and I um, I did it in two parts. And actually, I'm thinking that this might be ink tense, and then this is graphitant. I can't remember. And then, um, let's see. All right. And then this page right here was also done with the um, with the ink tense. And so as I was playing around with it, you know, I was like, gosh, I really love the blending here. I love this kind of look, this gradated look. And so, um. I was thinking to myself, self, you know, um, what about the happy art journalers? What could they do something like this in their journals with the supplies that they have that, um, the, um, watercolor crayons. And so I created this with the watercolor crayons and, um, I have to say, looks pretty darn close. I mean, of course, the colors are different, but it's still pretty close. So what I want to do is show you how to create a background that's kind of like this kind of gradiated look. And um, what you're going to need is just um, basically four crayons from your box. Let me go ahead and skip, skip a page. I paint a lot of backgrounds, and then I just go in and um, journal on them later. So let's see. Um, I had there's so many pages here. Okay, so that one was um, green and yellows and oranges, and the other one was green and blues. So, um, let's go ahead and do, let's do, um, you know what, let's do, ye oh, yellow, we'll do yellow, orange, and, um, and green. Sorry, my crayons are totally, like, I have used them to death. I almost bought another pack today, but I almost felt guilty, like a traitor. All right, so what you're gonna do, the first thing you're gonna do is take your crayon. Um, hopefully yours doesn't look as bad as mine does. And you're just going to, um, if your crayon still is you know, like intact, you're just gonna color it. And you're not gonna go all the way up. You're gonna go about maybe, I don't know, a third up the page. And then just like that, okay? What is that? Okay. Then you're going to take um, a big brush. This one is a three quarter inch um, flat brush and um, some water. I have um, actually here. Let me grab my. Well, uh, here. I'll use this one. Okay. So my water. And my my ugly rag. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start up at the bottom, and then you're gonna use like a feather stroke going up like that. Um. And you don't want to. You want a lot of water towards the bottom of the page, but as it goes up, you don't want too much water as it goes up because it gives it that kind of feathered look. Hopefully, you guys are seeing that as it's starting to work. 
just a fun, 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 fun look. Okay, so then we'll do this side over here. Oops, I'm getting dripping water everywhere. What else is new? Okay, so we're really feathering it up. And it looks like I have a lot of water here, so I'll try to move some of that down so I can get that feathered look. Okay, so um, through the magic of a television, we're going to draw this with the heat gun. I'm going to turn my journal around and I'm going to use, I can't remember which colors I was going to use. Blues? I'm so confused. Greens, greens, that's what I was going to use. Okay, so now I have my, um, my light green and I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of going up, not quite all the way up to that yellow. I'm going to leave some space in between. And um, you're going to do the same thing with the, um, the feather up, and you're going to go up into the yellow. So. I might not have a col enough color here. There we go. Okay, so can you see in here how it's starting to um, overlap? Oh my gosh, so beautiful. And then if you've got any like dark areas, that means that the crayon is still, um, it hasn't been saturated, it's still waxy there, so just give it a good rub. I'm gonna actually darken this one up just a little bit. Okay. So again, flicking up. All I'm doing here is really um, just moistening up the crayon so I can um, flick it up. If you are concerned about paint getting on your other pages, you can put a piece of scrap paper underneath. Um, me, I'm not worried about it. I actually like it with my... Um, And then I'm going to do the, um, the orange at the bottom here, the yellow. And I'm not going to go very far. Because you're going to want to flick that color up too. Just activating the crayon here. My crayons are really, um, they're very moist and so they stick to the paper a lot. Okay, there we go. So you want to make sure you have some room, some space between, you know, so your colors are blending. And you can actually continue this. You can even do more colors if you want to, like if you want to go into a red. Um, that would look nice. Maybe I'll do that on this one.
and let's go ahead and um, go into the the dark green. Okay, so again, not too far up. I absolutely love the look of this. I might use it on every single page from now on. Okay, I'm kidding. Maybe not. Okay, let's get it saturated with some water. And start flicking up. Ooh, gosh, so beautiful. Hopefully you guys can see how soft but vibrant it is. It almost reminds me of um, tie-dye. Oh my gosh. Okay, and I think I'm going to go ahead and go for some red here at the bottom. Really complete the whole rainbow look. Okay, so this is just red at the very, very bottom. So I guess what I do is I almost go halfway up in the block. switch my water because um, my water is turning green here. Okay. Oh. okay, are you guys loving this as much as I am? Or am I the only one? Well... You guys know me, I love rainbow colors. I remember um, growing up, I grew up in the 80s in the San Fernando Valley, and um, the girl next, next that lived next door to me you know, she was really cool. She was a little bit older than I am. And uh, she had this giant rainbow painted on her wall. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I could see it from, um, this is blue. I could see it from our front door. And I was just like, oh my gosh. When I grow up, I'm going to so paint a rainbow in my room too. But, you know, rainbows kind of went out of style by the late 80s when, you know, I could finally do that and um, you know as a grown-up I'm really not interested in painting a rainbow on my wall but I do like them in my journal let's add a little bit more color here yeah it was like it took up her whole entire wall it was the coolest thing ever I also remember that she and her sister um, were cheerleaders and they had these giant pom-poms that went on their shoes. I thought those were kind of cool too. Alright, so that's my trip down memory lane. So rainbows always remind me of my neighbor when I was growing up.
Oh my gosh. Okay. In love. So that completes it, and I think it kind of looks very similar to the ones that I did with the, um, oh, that's not the ink, <laughs> I keep doing that. Um, I think it looks very similar to the ones that I did with the, uh, with the ink tents and the graph tent. Um, so, if, you know, certainly if you don't want to spend any more money on art journaling supplies, you definitely can, um, achieve oh yeah that is the same one um you can achieve the same kind of look with um with the ink tents pencils or you can continue to use your um, stapler watercolor crayon so anyway uh thanks for watching i hope to see lots of rainbow pages in your journal and uh, i'll see you next time bye